We're gonna get serious right now because this is some crazy news. Der Spiegel says top journalist faked stories for years. Publication says Klaus Relodius committed journalistic fraud on a grand scale. Der Spiegel, I don't, I don't know if it's fair to call it like the New York Times of Germany. I've got their Wikipedia page. Basically it says, it's a German weekly news magazine published in Hamburg. So maybe not the New York Times, maybe more like Time Magazine or something. It was founded in 1947. It is, it was, it was founded 71 years ago. This is a legit serious news outlet. Let's read what they say this is on The Guardian. The German news magazine Spiegel has been plunged into chaos after revealing that one of its top reporters had falsified stories over several years. The media world was stunned by the revelations that the multi-award-winning journalist Klaus Relodius had, according to the Weekly, made up stories and invented protagonists in at least 14 out of 60 articles that appeared in its print and online editions, warning that other outlets could also be effective. Affected. Relodius, 33, resigned after admitting to the scam. He had written for the magazine for seven years and won numerous awards for his investigative journalism, including CNN Journalist of the Year 2014. I gotta say, first, I don't think most news organizations are doing a bad job. Most. Some are extremely bad, some are extremely good, and then you find, you find the average. When I look at CNN, what's the big problem with CNN? Their cable news commentary. It's awful because it's basically an op-ed department. But their fact-based news, news reporting is only somewhat bad. I get like a 5 out of a 10. I used to watch CNN 24-7 passively. Like I would keep it running so that if breaking news happened, I'd see the alert. And then Don Lemon went on that racist rant with his guests laughing and mocking, you know, people based on their race. And I was just like, like literally black people. I'm not talking about like white racism. I'm talking about literally mocking a, a black person saying horrible things. And so I'm just like, look, man, I don't, I don't know why CNN supports that stuff. Uh, Fox News is also bad in terms of like on, on air commentary. And what I mean by bad, I mean partisan. On, uh, their news outlets online tend to be pretty okay. And then you have these digital outlets that tend to be pretty okay. This is going to be so damning for mainstream news because, listen, this guy was CNN's Journalist of the Year in 2014, and he is an admitted fraud who made fake news. He, he straight up made fake stories printed out in numerous, uh, uh, numerous outlets. I'd have to imagine some of his reporting's probably been carried by CNN because here's the thing. Most reporters, they, they use each other. Wire services will have a reporter make a report, other news outlets then use that reporting because they trust it and it goes far and wide. Think about the amount of damage this guy has done over his career. I say, earlier this month, he secured the German reporter price, price, reporter of the year for his story about a young Syrian boy, which the jurors praised for its lightness, poetry, and relevance. It has since emerged that all of the sources for his reportage were at best hazy and much of what he wrote was made up. Think about the conflict, the war, the violence, the damage done when fake news is on this scale. This has got to be one of the most terrifying things that I've read in a long time. And, here, and, and I'll tell you what's really scary. There's a reason why I opened with a short defense of the press. It's because people like him still exist. And there are more. I don't believe the overwhelming majority of CNN or New York Times or Drew Spiegel or Guardian are like him. But they exist. And these scandals happen period per periodically. And what that means is, right now, at these news organizations, I'd be willing to bet there are at least a couple individuals who just straight make things up. And journalists always want to run defense and say, oh, why would a journalist do that? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why these guys make things up. How about Journalist of the Year, CNN 2014? How about journal, uh, Reporter of the Year, the German Reporter of the, uh, of the Year Award? This is, this is rather terrifying. The falsification came to light after a colleague who worked with him on a story along the U.S.-Mexican border raised suspicions about some of the details in Relodius's reporting, having harbored doubts about him for some time. The colleague, Juan Moreno, eventually tracked down two alleged sources, quoted extensively by Relodius in the article, which was published in November. Bowl said they had never met Relodius. Relodius also lied about seeing a hand-painted sign that read, Mexicans keep out, a subsequent investigation found. Think about all the people on the left who have heard this story about a sign that reads Mexican keep, uh, Mexicans keep out, and it turns out it was a lie. It never happened. Think about the culture war. How many activists have decided to get violent over fake news? 
How many activists were inflamed by stories like this, and it made them get up and call people to action? The culture war is being fueled by fake news from partisans and from charlatans. Let's read on. Other fraudulent stories include one about a Yemeni prisoner in Guantanamo Bay and one about NFL star Colin Kaepernick. In a lengthy article, Spiegel, which sells about 725,000 print copies a month as, and has an online readership of over 6.5 million, said it was shocked by the discovery and apologized to its reader and to anyone who may have been the subject of fraudulent quotes, made up personal details, or invented scenes at fictitious places. Der Spiegel's gone. Like, there's no way. There's no way you can trust them at this point. This is terrifying. The Hamburg-based magazine, which was founded in 1947 and is renowned for its in-depth investigative pieces, said Relodius had committed journalistic fraud on a grand scale. It described the episode as a low point in Spiegel's 70-year history. The lowest, I'd imagine. And in-house commission has been set up to examine all of Relodius's work for the weekly. Purge it all. All of it. He admitted it. The reporter also wrote for a string of other well-known outlets, including the German newspaper Taz, Welt, and the Frankfurter Algemeine Sunday edition. Die Welt tweeted on Wednesday, he abused his talent. No lying is, well, I guess you could say lying as a talent. Actors are pretty good at it. But this is something else. Relodius told Spiegel, he regretted his actions and was deeply ashamed. The magazine said, I am sick and I need to get help. He was quoted as saying, yeah, he regrets, he, he, he regrets being caught. Think about that. It's always people who get caught who regret it. And I understand there has to be a negative consequence for you to be upset about what you did. But think about all the journalists who are still doing this kind of thing. Moreno, who has worked for the magazine since 2007, risked his own job when he confronted other colleagues with his suspicions, many of whom did not want to believe him. For three to four weeks, Moreno went through hell because colleagues and those senior to him did not want to believe his accusations at first. Der Spiegel wrote in an apology to its readers. For several weeks, the magazine said, Relodius was even considered to be the victim of a cunning plot by Moreno. Relodius cleverly rebuffed all the attacks, all of Moreno's well-researched pieces of evidence, until there came a point when that didn't work anymore, until he finally couldn't sleep anymore, hunted by the fear of being discovered, the magazine wrote. Relodius is, it added, finally gave himself up last week after being confronted by a senior editor. In his confession to his employer, he said, it wasn't because of the next big thing, it was fear of failing. My pressure to not be able to fail got even bigger the more successful I became. The magazine, which is one of Germany's most prominent news organizations, is now trying to rescue its reputation amid fears a magazine already challenged by the problems in the German newspaper industry will struggle to recover. All his colleagues are deeply shattered, the magazine wrote. In particular, it said in the department society in which he worked, his colleagues are astounded and sad. The affair feels like a death in the family. This story just published today only about a couple hours before I have read this article. And I got to say, for one, I have an over, I have a, I am seriously concerned that stories like this are going like, look, this is one person. So don't take it out of proportion. It doesn't mean all news is bad. And we already have an issue of trust in the mainstream media. But I will also add, do take it as evidence that there is an underlying problem. There are journalists who do this. We need to know who we can trust. And this is the challenge. This just shows us they exist. And as many, as often as journalists try to claim that they're the good, the heroes doing the right thing, this just shows us it's not true for everybody. And it should be obvious to anybody that, that even a small number of people like this can completely destroy the news industry. The whole point of, of, of working in journalism is trust that people know that you are going to be honest with them to the best of your abilities. Now, our entire news industry is being flooded by these digital blogs that pump out activist garbage. They're being flooded by people so desperate to succeed, like this guy, Klaus Relodius, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, that he publishes fraud on a grand scale. And the most terrifying thing about all of it is that we now know, or I should say, we can speculate based on the fake story. We now know that he published fake stories, and then we can speculate. When he writes about the border in the U.S. and Mexicans, Many people on the left are going to assume things that aren't true are. They're going to say, I trust this news outlet. Keep, keep, look, here's, the, here's, here's the, 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 the big spike in the, in the, in the, in the ground, the, this, the railroad spike, nail in the coffin, whatever. CNN journalist of the year, a man who fabricated a six, 14 of 60 articles, many of them outside of that had, 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 were hazy at best. He's admitted to lying. 
He is CNN's Journalist of the Year in 2014. That has to be one of the most damning things in the whole story. CNN, I would hope, will issue a statement and call out any reporting he has done. And any reporting for any outlet needs to call him out and they need to, they, they need to issue corrections on all of it. I don't, I don't think it makes sense just to delete every single article he's ever written, but to redact, like delete the contact contents and just put up a notice saying this guy admitted to publishing fake news and he received an award from CNN in 2014. Well, I'll say this. I'm not a big fan of CNN. I don't like the racist tirade they went on. I don't like Don Lemon talking about, you know, black holes swallowing airplanes, whatever nonsense he's bringing up. And I don't like the fact that, you know, well, look, he went on a racist tirade, as I mentioned. But I got to say, when people call CNN fake news, it's, it's a bit hyperbolic for the most part because, well, they're just opinionated, which is bad. It's not good news. And they do some generally fine reporting, but they do have a lot of bad reporting. And now we have this. So if anyone asks you, if anyone asks you why you don't trust CNN, I would cite this. They'll say CNN's in fake news. Spec. Oh, what about that guy, Klaus Relodius, 33, who admitted to producing fake news and CNN had awarded him Journalist of the Year in 2014? If this guy had pumped out fake news and then admitted it, that he was lying just to try and succeed and CNN awarded him, what fact checking is CNN really doing? Because I'll say this. Do I think everyone at CNN is like this guy? No, of course not. But if, if this guy flew past CNN, think about this. When this guy says, here are my sources, and here's what happened. Where are the fact checkers? Where are CNN's fact checkers calling up these sources to prove these stories are real? Now, I don't know if he reported for CNN. That's not the point. The point is, somehow, they, they gave him an award. They gave this guy an award. This, this really scares me. It does. I think it's only going to get worse. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the main channel.